Hi, welcome to this video. So today uh, we're going to make some kind of a fun project. Um, in this uh, video, um, I'm going to talk about how we uh, do uh, dye uh, made from electronics. So I'm a big fan of uh, Settlers of Catan and each turn of Settlers of Catan, um, you actually roll a die, um, not just one die, you you roll two die. And basically um, the sum of those two uh, account for each turn for uh, each player. So basically I wanted to make something fun out of this. So be, what I did is um, they said, okay, let's approach the problem using electronics. Uh, let's roll two dice uh, electronically. And uh, in our case, I would use a microcontroller, SAM D51, and uh, use true random, just like uh, the roll of a die is actually random and we don't use the random function. Um, so basically it needs some kind of like a physical attribute that kind of defines the randomness. And uh, that rolls uh, two different dice and that is displayed on the screen. Um, so that is the whole premise behind today's video. Um, so the problem with the random, just like I mentioned, is um, it is dependent on um, the previous random that is being rolled and uh, the Arduino implementation is not all that great. And I don't know exactly how it is implemented to SAMD51. But the good thing is Atmel, a uh, company that actually makes SAMD51 uh, has a uh, hardware uh, control. So basically it's called a uh, true random number generator drive TRNG. Um, so basically, um, it kind of like generates these random numbers based on a physical attribute like uh, electronic noise. And um, you can read up on it, just search for this particular article and you can see how it actually generates these random numbers. Um, and then implementing it in Arduino is actually very simple. During a setup, you just initially uh, enable the, the true random number generator and then um, whenever you require a new uh, random number just call the function uh, where it kind of like um, looks for the random number generated from the driver and then returns it so basically uh, all i'm doing is calling this function anytime i require a random number instead of using the random number generator so basically um, the hardware that I'm going to use in this project is WIO terminal. This is one of those microcontrollers made by Seed Studio. Full disclosure, this um, hardware is provided to me with, with no cost to me. Um, so uh, this is uh, pretty cool. It has different kind of sensors already built into this board. Um, so it, the the brains of this particular WI terminal is, uh, like I said, uh, the Atmel um, SAMD51. Um, it has a microphone, it has a buzzer, um, whole bunch of buttons. It also has a coprocessor that does um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, um, and it has an accelerometer, and that is what we're going to use today, light sensors and uh, IR emitters. So basically, uh, this is pretty cool, and the other side of it actually has a display. So we're going to use the display, we're going to use the uh, random number generator, we're going to use the accelerometer. So the design of the project is, um, if I actually move uh, this WIO uh, terminal, um, so create kind of like a motion of rolling a die, um, it should detect that motion. I would call, uh, detect that as a shake, and then I would call the two random number generator and uh, generate two random numbers and display it on the screen. So that is the whole design of this particular project. Uh, so the easiest way to actually design it is, um, actually um, all the code is on github uh, is to use the inbuilt accelerometer so um, the code is actually very very simple so all you're doing here is like pulling the accelerometer and you're looking for motion so think of it like um, like changes and uh, in this case i'm looking for two changes happening uh, very quickly. In that case, it will uh, generate two random numbers and display on the screen. But uh, let's go and see how this looks. So all the code that you find here is on GitHub. Uh, so you should be able to find the links in the description of this video. Um, so all we're doing here is looking for um, the changes in accelerometer data. If it detects motion twice, it's going to roll two different dice. So basically, um, so Let's shake it uh, and let's see if it rolls. Um, so there you go. So it, it rolled uh, two different numbers. Um, 
but the problem with this is actually if i uh kind of like um even don't shake it and if i just do this right so after two seconds it's going to still roll so basically this is a problem so this has so basically if, if someone like you know knocks it twice it's going to roll a number so so that's not good so basically this means that uh, we probably have to do something special to actually look for different kinds of motions Okay, now that we have seen how this looks, so you see the problem, right? So the problem is that uh, we are um, actually not getting um, the shake motion detected appropriately. So the idea then is probably try to do something better, try to detect this particular shake motion that is like uh, emulating, uh, like uh, shaking the die in your hand. Uh, so. The idea is to use machine learning. So machine learning can probably differentiate between different kinds of motions that are happening. Um, so the idea is to create or train these machine learning algorithms to identify lift. That is every time you lift the WIO terminal, the shake, and uh, actually just sitting idle. So we'll uh, classify that as noise. Oh. So in this case, uh, we see changes in X, Y, and Z direction, and uh, that is our accelerometer data. And from there, we bin these uh, samples into three different bins, so lift, shake, and noise. And once that is done, we filter the data and extract uh, what we call as features. Um, so this is very important, so you can kind of like clean the noise. You don't want to put the noise into the, the machine learning because it's kind of like, you don't want to overfit your, uh, your uh, neural network as well. So basically the filtering the data is very, very important. Once you filter it, uh, you train your neural network for this training, you require a lot of data, so collect a whole bunch of data. I will go through uh, how we actually do this. Um, so basically we train our neural network, verify the performance on a different data set, go back and train and collect more data if needed, change the filters and stuff like that. So we would repeat these processes until we get good uh, performance on our testing data set. That uh, data set is completely uh, different from the training data set. So this way you kind of like make sure that your um, uh, model performs well in a real world um, deployment. And once you are happy with the results, you can actually deploy the model. So this is the general overview of the machine learning um, uh, algorithm that we're going to use to train this um, particular motion. So we're going to use uh, two different web-based machine learning. Uh, initially, I will talk about edge impulse and how we can actually collect uh, the data from the device, uh, train the data, train the neural network, and then deploy it as well. And once uh, we are done with that, we go for a more simpler approach. The simpler approach is to use Tinkergen, and it's like a graphical way of actually doing what we are doing using Edge Impulse, and uh, it kind of like makes our life easier. Once we develop these machine learning algorithms from either of these methods, uh, we're gonna deploy it on this uh, microcontroller over here. So the whole machine learning is actually working on the microcontroller. And uh, let's look at how we can do that. So in this part of the video, we are going to look at actually um, sending data to Edge Impulse, uh, training the neural network, and uh, uh, then uh, exporting it and deploying on it on WIO. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave the links uh, to this um, in the description as well. So the first part is actually uh, installing Python 3 and Node.js. Um, you can follow the instructions over here. And once you have installed Node.js, you can then install the Edge Impulse uh, CLI. Uh, once uh, that is done, you're all ready to go. So the first step is to connect your WIO uh, terminal to your computer using a USB-C cable and then there is a switch over here so if you turn it once it turns on um, so you want to then from this position go down two times so one two and uh, let's do it one more time okay so once you do that it's going to show up as a um, as a folder in your computer again all the instructions are over here um, so before you actually um, proceed you want to go and download this particular firmware um, and it's already pre-compiled and you can just uh, copy that into the arduino folder so i'm going to do that right now so over here i have already downloaded the firmware uh, so basically i'm just going to copy it into the arduino 
um, new drive that shows up. So we just copy it over. And once that is copied, it'll reboot. So the next step is to actually run uh, this particular command. So you can type in edge impulse daemon. So open any PowerShell and type in that particular command. So I have already logged in um, into my um, Edge Impulse. Uh, after I uh, do it one time, uh, you'll never ask me again. So basically, in this case, it'll, it'll keep running in the background um, and keep sending data to my particular um, library, uh, the, the project that I have created. But um, if you haven't created one, go ahead and create uh, uh, Edge Impulse uh, uh, project. In this case, in the Edge Impulse, you see that this is actually connected um, and you see this green dot. So basically it's connected uh, using the daemon. Um, so you can then go ahead and acquire data. So you can click on the acquire data um, side of uh, the the Edge Impulse in your project. Uh, so here your device is your WIO device um, and uh, you can create a label. So in order to train something, you can actually um, train it as a different uh, labels. So the first label we're gonna create a shake. Uh, so I'm gonna create a shake label. We're gonna collect data for 10 seconds using uh, the built-in um, accelerometer with a frequency of 100 Hertz. So all I have to do is click on start sampling and it'll ask me to uh, wait to start. And once it says 10 seconds left, I'm going to train it on shake. So all I'm doing is creating that particular motion a few times, and now that data is uh, transferred into here um, online. So here you can then go and uh, click and split the sample uh, because I created more than one particular sample for shake. Um, so I just like move this window over here, make sure that it is capturing all the features. So I did five different shakes over the last 10 seconds. So I just do this and say split. I have already trained uh, my data set, so I'm not going to overwrite it. But again, here you go. So this is how you would collect this data. And in this case, you have collected five different one second data sets for uh, your shake. Um, uh, sampling and I'm just going to delete it because I already have a good amount of data set in here. So you want to do this uh, for uh, noise as well. So you can create the label noise, start sampling, and I'm not just going to do anything. Um, like I'll just let it stay over here and the data is going to get transferred based on this being just stationary on the, on the table. So basically uh, this kind of like gets the noise data uh, back into the console. So once you have the noise data, um, it, it is uploaded in the <clears throat> website. Um, so over the here, you can then go and split the sample. Uh, over here, uh, you can go and create multiple, say everything here is noise. So uh, you can go and add more segments. You can like click over here. You want to add one more segment. So, so basically in this case, you have a few of these uh, samples of noise. So within the 10 seconds, you have maybe a lot of noise that you can actually use. Uh, but this way you would build up your data set, okay? Uh, once you build up your data set, make sure that you have enough data set for all three labels. Um, so in my case, I have two minutes of uh, shake data, two minutes of lift data, and two minutes of noise data. So I have trained uh, my, my model based on this. Um, so once you have the data, which takes a lot of time to actually collect, uh, spend that time and collect a good set of data. Once that is created, you would create something called as impulse. Um, so impulse is uh, their way of saying that how you want to process the data. Um, so basically this is a time series data. Uh, you would uh, then do something called spectral analysis. Um, so basically it extracts the spectral features out of your uh, data, and then you can actually do something called as neural network classifier. So you want to classify it into the three different features, in our case, lift, noise, and shake. And once you uh, create those based on this, uh, a spectral analysis, you would uh, then uh, output that as your output uh, features. So once you create this particular uh, way of uh, the impulse, you can then say save impulse save impulse, then go to uh, spectral features and we can do a little bit of processing. So you can do a low pass filter or a high pass filter. 
uh, create how many cutoff frequencies you want uh, and you can have different parameters for your Fourier transformation and then you can do save parameters. Once you're done with save parameters, you want to generate these features. So generating features takes a little bit of while. So once you actually um, are satisfied with the parameters that you have created, you can then go and generate your features and that is kind of plotted over here and you can then see how how different these features are with respect to one another. And uh, this is your input data. So this is what is very important in actually cleaning up your noise so that you don't train your neural network with your noise. So once this is done, you can then go to your neural network classifier. Uh, I'm using 100 training cycles with a very small learning rate. Uh, I only have 33 features, uh, so I'm going to use a small neural network. So I have uh, a neural network uh, with 10 neurons and then there are five neurons underneath it and the output layer is only three. So basically this is a small scale, uh, small scale data set. Um, so basically uh, once this is trained, this takes a while. This runs on their computers. Uh, I'm so happy that they are um, providing this feature for free because this takes a lot of computational time. Um, and uh, it's able to then go ahead and look for how accurate its its model is based on the, the training data set. So once you have this, then you can go to your model testing uh, and look for uh, some data sets that you have collected independently. And hopefully this data is not on the, the training data set. So this way you can look for your accuracy of models. So basically um, it's, it's doing a very good job in detecting um, noise and shake that is all i care about i don't care about left so even if the there is some inaccuracy in detecting left that's okay all i care about is if it's able to detect uh shake so basically now that i'm happy that this model is working then all i will do is deploy it so in deployment you would select the adreno library as one of the options and make sure that you have enabled the EON compiler or EON compiler and uh, you can use the quantize int 8 um, the settings over here for the EON compiler and then you can click on build this takes a while and then you will get a zip file that you that you can use directly in um, in platform IO or Arduino. So let's go ahead and use this uh, zip file that we download. So over here, I, I have again uh, left all the links that are required to actually run this in um, the, the description of the video. So basically, um, we, uh, I'm using platform IO to actually um, deploy the, my model on this particular device. Um, so in this case, I have written all the code, the code is here, and I just extract the zip file, put it in here, and make sure that I have actually included that as one of the libraries uh, while compiling my project. In this case, um, I, I include that particular header and then deploy it. And, and basically uh, it kind of like processes um, the data that comes out of the accelerometer and then predicts how good or bad the prediction is. And if the prediction is uh, good, it's going to show the data, but it's going to do a very good classification. So let's go ahead and compile and send it to my device. So right now it's doing a real time uh, data acquisition from the accelerometer processing it uh, and uh, classifying the data into left noise and shake. In this case, I'm not doing anything. So it's detecting this as a uh, noise. Um, so let's do a little bit of shake and let's see what happens to the prediction. There you go. So it detected uh, the shake. So basically once it detects shake, you can create um, an actionable um, thing that it can do in our case is going to roll two different die and going to display it on the screen. So I'm going to load that program. Again, the links are in the description as well. So in this case, I'm looking for um, the classification of the shake. If the shake value is more than 99%, it's going to generate two random numbers and display it. So over here, let's do the shake. And there you go. So you roll two different die, then total is eight and completely random. Um, so shake, there you go. But if you do anything else, 
you know, you do this, it's not going to detect that as shake and it's not going to roll it. And that is great. This is exactly what I wanted to create. And we are able to do this right on the fly on the microcontroller. This is not running on the computer and all it's doing is getting the power from the computer and it's actually doing it right on the edge. So this is one of the applications of how you can do tiny ML on uh, small microcontrollers and uh, do it on the edge. So now let's look at how to use uh, Tinkergen IDE uh, to actually uh, do the exactly same thing. So it's more user friendly and it's graphical user interface. So you want to go to the Tinkergen IDE, create a free account, and uh, you want to run the CodeCraft uh, Assistant. Um, I, I have left the links below, so you can just go there and download the appropriate um, the executable file and you want to keep that running. Um, so let's let's do that and uh, let's keep that running and try to send data from our device into CodeCraft. The code is still old over here. So all I did is click on connect over here and connect it to the appropriate COM port. So once that is done, um, you want to create a new model. In our case, we're going to do a motion recognition using the built-in accelerometer. Uh, they also have some firmware that is already trained. Uh, let's just do the training on our own and let's process it. So in this case, uh, all we are doing is uh, collecting data. Um, so it's going to send um, the, the data from button A, B, and C. So basically, um, this button is A, this is B, this is C. So basically, uh, let's say you want to train for flip, so you click this button and train it. So let's let's upload this. So what it does is once you press this particular button, it records the data for two seconds. So once you're happy with what this is and you can click on upload, so it's going to upload the data into this particular uh, device. Okay, so now it is completed uploading. Um, so it just says uploaded successfully. Um, so I'm going to turn it off and turn it on. And let's say connect, COM5, there you go, connected successfully. So now we have three different buttons. So this button is going to get data for um, flip, and this gets data for wave, and this gets data for idle. So once you click it, it says sampling data for flip. And uh, actually, I didn't do the action, but you probably need to do that action, but that data is stored over here. Um, so I'm just going to deleted because I've already um, collected enough data, but you can do the same. So basically I'm going to press this button over here. It says collect data for wave. So you do the wave action and let it go. So now this data is stored over here. So now you have two seconds of wave to actually get that wave data. Uh, but anyway, so you keep doing that. Uh, so basically uh, clicking one button over here, you don't delete it in your case because you're going to train data on your device. So click this uh, button, appropriate button, and it tells you what you need to do and it transfers the data over here. So it's very quick to actually get a lot of data. So keep on repeating that step over and over until you get to good data set. So once you're done with getting your data set, now you can actually do the training of a neural network. Uh, so in this case, uh, they made it very simple. So all you have to do is select what scale of your neural network is. In this case, I selected small. So it's a 10 neuron dense network followed by a five neuron dense network followed by your output. Again, 100 training cycles with a, a small learning rate and uh, with a particular conference interval. So basically, um, this also takes a little bit of uh, time. I am guessing this is also sending data to Edge Impulse, uh, but the report looks very similar to Edge Impulse report, and uh, the training is very, very accurate uh, for this particular data set that I have collected, and then you can look at the logs, and uh, then you can do model deployment. So basically, it kind of like saves the model on the cloud. So once this model has been, uh, uh, developed you can then go to programming and basically you can create a programming so basically um, you want to collect the data uh, once you collect the data you can then create a model if the prediction result for your model is um, wave then you can then go ahead and uh, display on the screen uh, that it is um, 
a random number at a particular point so 60 and 70 uh, so let's now go and upload this so basically what it does is uh, now that your model has been deployed um, you can actually uh, say that once you detect this particular motion of wave on this device it will generate two different random numbers and print it on the screen yes you can. okay to successfully deployed uh, the model um, so it's over here so basically if it detects shake it's going to display two different models but if there's noise it's not going to detect that and it's not going to uh, update those two numbers but yeah if you shake it's going to generate two random numbers between one and six but the problem that i have again with this is it's it's going to use a random function um, that is included in arduino that it kind of is wrapping it around this graphical interface uh, but uh, yeah, so basically, but this is very, very easy to understand. So all it's doing is doing the prediction and if it detects wave, it generates two different numbers. So again, these are different ways of actually uh, developing a model and uh, training a neural network as well as deploying it on your microcontroller. So yeah, so this is the end of this video and uh, hopefully in the few weeks I will have uh, more videos about other projects that I'm working on. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty fun and uh, ML on the edge. So yeah, this is really fun. Bye.